So I did a live stream last night and two very excellent video topics came up. And we're going to cover them, one of them right now. The one we're going to cover right now is how to use a bead sight. What makes them awesome and how do I use it? Well, we're going to start with the basics. Because if you don't understand the basics, everything else is way more complicated. To the whiteboard of knowledge! So when you're thinking about firearms, anything at all, you need to think in terms of a triangle. Except normally it actually looks like a triangle. Try that again. Terms of a triangle. So what do I mean by that? For example, in the automotive field, you're thinking of terms of a circle. Now there's different types of automotive technique. Well, there's your mechanic. What they're going to do is just replace parts. Then there's your technician and designer when they're going to be thinking in terms of cir uh, circles and they're going to be actually be designing and diagnosing problems. No matter where you look on a car, you will find a circle. Yeah, you could be like, oh, well, there's ratios and fractions. What are those? Expressions of a circle. For example, your radio's not working. The circle starts at a battery. Find where the circle's broken. For example, you want to increase your horsepower. How can I make these circles move faster and more efficiently? Same holds true with firearms in a triangle. All right, so I want a better trigger. What am I doing? I'm making a smaller triangle. Minute of angle, what is that? A triangle. A bullet, what is that? A triangle. Angular motion, a triangle. Sight radius, a triangle. The bad guy's here, you're standing here, he's going to wind up here by the time the bullet gets to him. What is that? A triangle. Elevation difference. A triangle. No matter where you look on a firearm, you will find triangles. So whenever you're wondering about a problem with a firearm or you're trying to increase the performance of a firearm, you need to look for what triangle is misbehaving or what triangle can I make more efficient. So he was having a problem. When he was using his bead sight, he was not hitting the target. Like I said, we're going to start from the basics, though, and selecting your firearm. So what you're going to want to do, before anything, when you're still at the gun shop picking out your firearm, you're going to take your arm, you're going to make a triangle, you're going to set the firearm stock in the triangle, and you're going to curve your finger. Your finger should land in the trigger guard. If not, you need to adjust the stock length. I promise you, if you actually have a properly fitting shotgun, you will feel less felt recoil, it'll come into target quicker, and it's easier to manipulate. So for this particular shotgun, I would have to take off an inch and a half on the stock. Now if your finger's up here, you need to add stock length. You want it, this shotgun isn't perfect, but it's a lot closer. You want it so your finger goes in the trigger guard. We're going to pretend that my finger's going in the trigger guard, like this. That would be the perfect stock length. The next triangle that's going to concern you is how your head orients with the bead sight. So what you're going to do, now I heard this described in Hunter Safety and it's perfect. So you're going to get in your boxing stance. You're going to protect your knockout button. Now you're going to grab your shotgun with that same stance. You're going to close your eyes. Open them. Pick a target out on the wall. Close them again. And bring it up. Oh, this one's got a hammer. i got to do that again. And bring it up. And you should be looking down your bead sight and relatively close to the target. If you're not, that shotgun's not going to work for you. Your bead sight should look like this. So you got your shotgun receiver, it comes up, you got a little dent right there, and then it goes down. The only thing you should see is the bead. If you see barrel, that shotgun's not gonna work for you. Now this one doesn't quite work for me. I do see a little bit of barrel, but it's okay, because this shotgun design, or the purpose for this shotgun, is buckshot within 30 yards. So if I go center mass, even though I'm seeing a little bit of barrel, I'll hit somewhere 
within here. It's fine with Buckshot. Still does the job. So uh, let's take a look at this shotgun. Same thing. I'm comfortable right now. Now I'm going to open my eyes. Boom. Perfect bead sight alignment. That is what you want. I know this freaks a lot of people out, but I'm going to aim at the camera. I'm going to adjust my head properly on this so you can see what it would look like. That's what it should look like in reverse if you were the target. Now we need to determine your eye do dominance to figure out what side of the triangle you're going on. You're going to put your finger right here and you're going to figure out what side does your finger land on of the triangle. Concentrate on your fingertip. Bring it into focus, let everything blur out, and bring it straight back to your eye. If it comes to your right eye, that's good. That's what you want. If it comes to your left eye, don't freak out and please don't try to start shooting left-handed. I promise you everything in the firearm world is designed around right-handed guns. It's way easier to just compensate with your left eye. Or your right eye. And there's different ways to do this. If I'm left eye dominant, what I'm going to do is I'm going to track my target. When I see my target, I'm going to keep tracking it with my eyes as I bring up my shotgun. Then I'll close my left eye for a second, bring it into focus, and make my shot. It's doable. Or you can go with a red dot on a shotgun. What that's going to do is when you look through it, the image will project itself on the target. So it doesn't matter what eye dominant you are, you'll see your target reticle where it needs to be. Because it has to go through this eye. Because this eye is shielded. So as long as your reticle is on the target you want to hit, you're good to go. <clears throat> this is where ghost rings actually excel. The fact that you can just zero them, they're set, and you can pick it up and use it without having relatively any shotgun experience at all. But they have disadvantages. Your triangle is set at a very specific range. There's nothing you can do about it. That's where you have to hit. So if you zero for 30 yards, if you're shooting any other distance than 30 yards, you're going to have elevation problems. With a bead sight, if I want to shoot farther away, I just expose more of the bead sight. If I need to shoot really far away, I expose a lot of the bead sight. And that's changing my triangle. So here's my bead, here's my target. It goes like this. So what I'm doing, by raising my head, I'm changing the triangle. I'm giving it more elevation. So then, this will all move up and it will hit the target. With ghost ring sights, you're fixed. You cannot adjust your triangle. No matter what, you're always going to hit in the same spot. So if it's any other distance than where you zeroed it for, you're going to be a little bit off. Bead sight, you can adjust your triangle on the fly. Bead sight doesn't obstruct a bunch of your view, so you can track targets easier. You can track your target, like, oh, there goes my target, and then on. His particular problem, he was hitting really high at a specific range. So what triangle do we need to adjust? There's two possibilities. The triangle on the trigger, he's either jerking it and he's messing up that triangle, or his head alignment is messing up that triangle. The most obvious choice, because it's a shotgun and he's not getting left or right movement, would be the triangle that he's seeing. That's the one he would need to adjust. Now, if you're confident you're not messing up your trigger triangle, but you're still off to one side, what you're going to want to do is check your bead sight alignment. So you're going to take some thread. You're going to tie it to your front bead, and you're going to bring it down on the back rib. You want it to form a straight line, making the smallest triangle possible. And that will tell you what rib is lined up with your bead, because sometimes they're canted just a little bit. I don't know why, but they are. Now, if you're all the way over to one side, 
If it's a new shotgun, I recommend sending it back to the manufacturer and having them redrill the bead. Because otherwise you're going to have problems. You're always going to be over to one side. It's not really a big deal with static targets, but if you have cross targets, you're going to find that, depending on what side it's canted on, either you're going to have troubles hitting your left cross targets or your right, because it will screw with your lead. It's going to screw up your triangle. Because you want to lead it just a little bit, and if your bead sight's off, your lead is going to be messed up. Your triangle's going to be messed up. You're going to miss. Now, one second. Sorry about that. So yeah, you got to make sure your bead sight's perfectly centered. Otherwise, when you're shooting at cross targets, it's going to screw with your lead. And you'll be like, okay, when they're flying from the left, I put my bead approximately this far ahead of my target. And then I hit it. If they're flying from the right, I try to do the same thing. And I'm missing. Why can't I hit right side targets? Your bead is probably slightly off center. Or why can't I hit left side targets? Your bead is probably slightly off center. The problem with bead sights is you're using it more like feel. It's kind of an acquired taste. You get good at it by doing it over and over and over again. You can't just zero it like a ghost ring. And there's a few different ways you can do this. One, you can shoot at clays. Unfortunately, if you're actually going to like a clay pigeon shoot, they don't want people out there with cylinder bore shotguns just dominating. So I put the clay pigeon shooter way ahead so it's basically already out of range of a cylinder bore by the time you pull up on it. And since we're looking at more of a tactical shotgun, that's just no good. Now, if you can get a clay pigeon shooter where you're standing right next to it, or it's slightly behind you somehow and doesn't hit you with clays, that is ideal. Because then it will be in range when it comes up, and you can practice. Not bad. Now, you can set up pop cans, but if you already know where the pop cans are, you're killing yourself. You don't want to do that. If anything, you face this way, have your buddy behind you set up a bunch of pop cans and then have like a shot clock or something. When it goes off, you turn around and you come up and you start shooting pop cans because your main concern is going to be your snapshot. You want to be able to start from right here. Like if you're caught by surprise, come up and snap the shot. Because a shotgun excels in one shot kills. So you want to be really good at making that one shot as quickly as possible. So if the pop can thing ain't an option, get your small game license, go to some public hunting ground, and anything with a heartbeat is fair game. And get really good. That's actually a really good way to do it because everything's a surprise. You have no idea when a target's going to present itself. So it's just like, oh, surprise! And then you got to shoot it real quick. You'll get really good at shotgun that way. If you live in the inner city, I don't know what to tell you because there's really not a whole lot you can do. Um, maybe buy a rifle. But anyway, so his particular triangle, like I said, was the triangle he was making with his eyes. And just to recap, whenever you're talking about firearms, when you want to increase the performance or something's not working out for you, you need to start looking for the triangle that is not functioning properly. If you can find the triangle, you can figure it out. Because there's armorers that just replace parts, gunsmiths, which will do minor machining, and then you got people like John Moses Browning. He understood the triangle. That's why he was good at firearms, that's why he could design them. Because he could think and form in terms of triangles. Anyway, I hope this video helped you out at least a little bit. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to check out any of my other videos, click on the links up here. If you'd like to help support the channel, I got my Patreon. I also have affiliate links in the description down below. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.